Hi, my name is Eric White. I'm the owner and principal photographer of Agape Photographic, a photography studio based in Youngstown, Ohio. We're here today at the beautiful Fellows Riverside Gardens, part of the Mill Creek Metro Parks, to do an interactive photography tutorial that will help you improve your photography skills. The tips in this tutorial will be for photographers of all levels of expertise. So if you're a beginner and not really sure what you're doing, don't worry. We won't get too in-depth with the mechanics of the camera, but we'll more focus on the artistic side of photography and composition. If you're a little bit more advanced, hopefully these tips will be good reminders of the basic components that comprise good photography. Now if you are more advanced and you're interested, as I shoot today, I'll be using Nikon's D700 digital SLR camera with Nikon's Nikkor 70 to 200 millimeter lens, and that's at uh, f2.8 all across the zoom range. Like I said, if you're a beginner and you have no idea what I just said, don't worry, you'll be just fine. We even brought along a photography student today who's a little bit new to photography that will help you understand that all of these tips can be practiced no matter your level of expertise. During this tutorial, we'll be reviewing three basic concepts of photography. The rule of thirds, adjusting your angle, and simplifying your shot. I hope you enjoy. Hey Sarah, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. This is our photography student for the day. Her name is Sarah, and we're gonna get started by having her take some photos of these beautiful blooming flowers behind us, and I'll take a few as well. Let's get started. Now that we've taken a few photos, let's analyze the results. If we analyze Sarah's photo, we'll find she did what most people do. She pointed her camera directly at the flower and took the shot. Her picture's not bad, but there's an easy way to make a more interesting photo. Follow the rule of thirds. Imagine that your image is divided into thirds, both horizontally and vertically. Typically, images are more captivating when the subject is placed at the intersection of two of these dividing lines or along one of these dividing lines. Here's a sample image I took that demonstrates the rule of thirds. If we apply our imaginary grid, the flower is aligned with the lower left intersection. In addition to the rule of thirds, another easy way to improve your photography is adjusting the angle of your shot. If you think about it, we spend all day, every day, viewing the world from the same perspective. That is about standing height and at eye level. Adjusting the angle of your shot can give a unique and different perspective that you don't get to see every day. Let's put that into practice, taking a few shots of the flowers that we were working with in the rule of thirds segment. So the way we're standing right now is about the normal perspective that people have of the world. As you walk around, look at things with your eyes, this is the way we view things. So these flowers behind us, for example, that we were shooting, practicing the rule of thirds, we only ever get to see from this perspective. Most people don't go to the trouble of bending over or getting up somewhere high where they can look down on the flowers. So we're gonna try a couple extreme angles and then review the results. Sarah, if you don't mind, I'll have you try a low angle, uh, maybe go down so that you're shooting right from above the rock wall, and I'll get a little bit of a higher perspective from on top of the rock wall, and then we'll compare the results. Okay. This shot is one of Sarah's first attempts after applying the rule of thirds. She took this shot from standing height eye level, so the perspective is normal. The perspective tends to become monotonous because it's nothing different than how we normally view our photographic subjects. Shooting from a lower angle by resting her camera on top of the rock wall, Sarah was able to capture the flower with a unique perspective. Here is the result. This is a much more compelling and interesting image. The flower now stands out from the other vegetation which at this angle blends to form a green background. The perspective allows us to see the flower from an angle we don't normally use and is much more interesting than Sarah's eye level image. My top view angle also creates a more interesting image. By standing on the rock wall and shooting down, I was able to isolate a single flower from the rest of the vegetation. This helps the flower stand out as a dominant subject of the image and highlights its beautiful features independently of the other fauna. All right, now that we've reviewed the rule of thirds and the practice of changing your angle to create a better image, we're gonna look at simplifying your photographs. Sarah, have you ever looked at a photograph or maybe a painting and gotten frustrated that you just don't know when the, where in the image to look? Yeah, why is that? 
Well, there's a couple reasons, and we're gonna put them into practice now. For this next exercise, I'm gonna put down my camera and have Sarah shoot a couple portraits of me. I'm the guy that's always behind the lens, so I don't get too many pictures of myself. We're here for my portraits in front of Lake Glacier, which is a beautiful part of Mill Creek Park. And there are a couple distracting elements that you see around us. Uh, we have this viewfinder over here and a park visitor that we're not gonna ask to leave because that would just be rude. Sarah's out there taking my photo. Let's look at the results and see what kind of an image she can get with this kind of a setup. This first portrait has a great background, but the image is busy and elements of the photograph compete for the viewer's attention. The viewfinder and park visitor are both about the same size and contrast as the intended subject. These other elements, competing to be the center of visual interest, distract from the subject. In order to fix this, I've instructed Sarah to find a different angle and get close enough to the subject to cut out the distractions. Here is the result. This image is visually much stronger. The rule of thirds is in effect, the angle is unique, and Sarah has eliminated distractions. When you're taking photographs, make sure your intended subject is the most dominant element of your image. Simplify your photo by getting in close and tight on your subject. So Sarah, now that we've practiced that a little bit, can you see how eliminating the distracting elements of your photo creates a much stronger image? Yes. Excellent. When you guys are out shooting, remember to get rid of the distracting elements, maybe zoom in on your subject, and create that strong center of visual interest so that your audience knows exactly where to look. This will help you create much better photographs. Now that we've practiced these three basic tips for improving your photography composition, let's review. First, when you're out shooting, keep the rule of thirds in mind. Place the subject of your image along one of the dividing lines or along the intersection between any two dividing lines. Also, try changing your angle to create a more aesthetically pleasing and interesting image. Get above your subject, get below your subject, try moving to the left or the right. And finally, when you just don't know where to look in a distracting image, eliminate some of those distracting elements whenever possible. If that just doesn't work, try zooming in a little bit tighter on your subject or moving closer to your subject to get rid of the distractions. Hopefully these tips have helped you improve your photography skills, but remember the best way to become a better photographer is just to take your camera, go out, and start shooting.